Hey guys, Ken from All Pro. So we're, this will be a quick little video. What we're going to do is start over. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not a hundred. How do I say what it is that I'm doing? The concentration. Oh God, you're so. <laughs> Hey guys, Ken from All Pro here. So we got a little little job we're gonna do today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reconfigure the way our front shocks are mounted on the JL. Everything works fine. We're not really having a problem by any means, but what we're gonna do is the way the shock is currently pivoting and rotating, when the axle drops, it causes a bind in the shock. And it's just a natural inherent characteristic of any of these Jeeps. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a product from Metal Cloak. It's a lower shock mounting bracket that'll actually flip the shock 90 degrees and allow it to rotate properly on the bolt axis. Um, might not make sense what I'm saying, but once I get it put on the vehicle and I'll kind of demonstrate over there, we'll totally see what we're doing then. It'll make a lot of sense. It's just gonna help free up the shock from trying to bind when you're going through your suspension travel for high articulation situations like in the rocks and stuff. Now, I will say that this is not something that you have to do. You don't need this. This is a luxury. This is just a little thing that I love tweaking and playing with my Jeep. It's what I do for a living. So I just have the luxury of that and I like to do this. So we bought these brackets from Metal Cloak. They come gold zinc plated. I took them and had them powder coated black just to match all the rest of my stuff. I don't like the gold. It just doesn't match the color of my vehicle. There's nothing wrong with their plating. It actually holds up well. We got the Metal Cloak skid plates on this Jeep. We've beat them up. We've had a good time with them. And honestly, the, the plating works fine. So I just wanted to get them black powder coated. So I dropped them off local powder coater. Had them done black, doesn't affect anything. We left the zinc plating underneath there, so it's kind of like a dual protected. So there's two different brackets. It comes all in necessarily bolts and hardware. It comes with a couple spacers that go where the shock used to mount and box which now jump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip these tires off real quick. I'll explain better exactly what these do and uh, we'll go from there. See you in a minute. Say something, blah, blah, grab bracket, blah, 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 say something. That's what you told me to say. <laughs> All right, we got the tire off, we got the shock ready to come off, so now we're going to show you how this bracket actually works. All right, so what happens is when this shock travels on its arc and it swings, this bushing is going to want to bind in this shock because the shock doesn't naturally rotate like that. So what this bracket's going to do is we're going to bolt it on and we're going to move the shock to this mount here so when this comes down, it'll actually swing like this versus trying to swing like this. It'll actually free up a little bit of binding. This is not like going to be a night and day, oh my gosh, difference. But it's just one more thing on the suspension that won't be binding. It'll allow for a little bit better articulation maybe. A little smoother articulation would be actually probably the best thing you're going to gain. Um, other than that, it's just kind of a neat little trick bracket. So we're going to take this out of here, put it back together, and see what all we get. Okay, so I just mocked the bracket up so you can see what the bracket looks like. When you put it in, there's a little aluminum sleeve that goes in here where your shock used to go, and that just stops it from getting crushed when you tighten the bolt. There is already a bolt in your factory bracket, so it just bolts up into that little bolt. There's a bolt, one bolt that goes in there, and then you use the bolt over where your brake line was to help strengthen it and stiffen it up a little bit. So what used to happen is when this suspension would droop, this bushing would bind in the shock. So as that axle droops, the bushing is actually literally binding because the shock can only bend so much. So the bushing's bending like that. Well, now we're gonna sit this bushing in here sideways. So when the suspension travel comes down, all the shock has to do is just rotate through its travel. 
So it really is going to help stop a lot of binding on that situation there. Again, it's not going to be a night and day, oh my gosh, difference, but it's a pretty neat little bracket for such a simple little upgrade, and they're really cheap. They're less than 100 bucks. So let's uh, get it all bolted up and get it fitted. All right, so just put your old bolt in here. Screwdriver, it doesn't really matter. Just turn it. It's not a big deal. These are uh, pretty, pretty pressurized shocks, so that's going to take me a second. One more added benefit I wanted to go over real quick. When you take this shock and move it from here to here, you're obviously gaining a little bit of distance there as far as moving it outboard. Along with changing the pivot on this, if you look up in here, we gained a whole lot more clearance. So if you're running a big body shock, maybe a reservoir shock or anything of that nature, when the suspension travels, it's going to droop and pull towards the passenger side. It's natural what a track bar is going to do. So when the side droops and pulls towards the passenger side, it might contact here. So this would actually gain you some extra clearance. It'd be another application if you had a big body shock or something, you're having some fitment issues. For a more advanced suspension, your just typical bolt-on stuff, none of this is going to really matter. But we're actually starting to get to the point where we're trying to maximize suspension travel. I'm not worried about building some big, huge Jeep on 40s and going to conquer the world. Just trying to maximize what I got and not go broke doing it. So we actually gained some clearance. We might eventually run it with some RX 900 shocks eventually in the front of this, which are remote reservoir. They're not too hard to package in the front. They're really tough to package in the rear because of the way they're set up. It helps me gain a little bit of clearance for some bracketry to put the remote reservoir on there. So we gained clearance here. We changed our pivot there. Really for the, I think they're like $89 or $99. I'm not really sure. For, for the little bit of money that it cost, it's a great little upgrade. I mean, something that's, you don't have to drill no holes. You don't have to do anything. You could easily do this in your driveway. So if you want a shock bracket like this, you can go to Metal Cloak. That, that's who the manufacturer of this is. They do come gold zinc plated, not black like what ours is because we had ours powder coated. Um, or you can give us a call at the shop. I got them in stock all the time. Thanks. Have a good day, guys.